spoke. Right, in the last episode, well, I painted the roof and it all went quite well. I was quite pleased with it. And it would appear that painting your boat is very, very interesting to people. I had a lot of comments and a lot of questions, so thanks to everybody for that. So in this episode, what I'm going to do, well, it's going to be a bit like watching paint dry. In fact, it's going to be very like watching paint dry. In fact, we're going to watch paint dry. No, 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 we're not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a bit more detail about how I put the paint on, give you some of my top tips that sort of I stumbled across whilst doing the roof. Um, please don't think for a minute I'm a painting expert, I'm not. These are just things that I stumbled across that I thought might help other people. I'm going to answer a couple of your questions as well. So let's get to it. Right, here's a, a section of the boat I've prepared already. Now, that was prepared about a week ago, but the weather has been absolutely horrible. It's been raining and it's been windy. It's been awful. We've had the Sahara Desert dust come in and land on all, all the boats now it's been awful but the weather's really good today and I've got a one day slot to do a bit of painting so I've prepped that about a week ago and now we're going to start painting it and I'm going to talk you through it I'm going to try and give you some paint tips do a bit of painting and answer your questions all at the same time what could possibly go wrong eh well we'll see right got the paint tray roller already loaded up and I'm going to use two brushes for this I'm going to use a larger brush for tipping off and I'm going to use a, a smaller brush just for doing around the corners and the edges where the roller won't get and then I'll still tip it off with a larger brush. So yeah, it'll be a bit like juggling. So let's start applying the paint. I'm going to start painting just here and I'm going to work an area of around about one foot by one foot. Sometimes it's okay to go a bit more if it's a nice straight plain bit of uh, metal work that's okay but because we've got little bits dotted around that I'm going to sort of reduce the size of it. So again, loaded roller and just start rolling on. Working the paint on. I'm going to go all the way to the edge as much as I can, trying not to hit that white edge I did when I was doing the roof. And it's just a question of keeping an eye on what you're doing, making sure that it covers nicely. I've got a couple of rivet heads there, screw heads. I'm just going to roll that on. And load the roller up a bit. When you start painting, your roller originally will be empty. It will take quite a bit of paint to get it loaded up properly, and then it will start working a lot better. And you'll hear it really sort of hissing at you gives that sort of hissing noise as it's rolling and you know that you've got enough paint on. So be very very careful not to twist the roller too much, making sure I've got enough paint on. Work a bit there, <laughs> take your dry brush and just start running it up like that, nice and steady not too aggressive. And that just takes all the little air bubbles out. Now I'm just getting the small brush going inside there where the roller won't fit and just layering some paint on. Now the finish on this is not important, this is just keeping the weather out. Nobody is going to see this. So you can afford to sort of really go to town with the paint, you know? Now John Reed has asked, what paint am I using? I'm using the International Top Black Marine Paint. Um, I find it quite good. It's unthinned. I'm not really familiar enough with how paint works to thin it accurately. I think it would be uh, a mistake for me to even try that. But uh, yeah, just the International Top Black as it comes out the tin seems pretty good to me and it's working. Now, Happy and Atheist has asked, can you use a paint pad? To be honest, I have no idea. It's not something I would actually try. Um, I don't think these paints lend themselves to paint pads very well. Um, but maybe one of the viewers can answer that question. Has anybody used a paint pad? And maybe answer that question. Okay, let's have a look at the top tips for painting a boat. Well, other than the very obvious, like try and get the best equipment you can, relax into the job, don't get too sort of upset with doing it, and just try and take your time with it. Preparation is the most important thing I feel when it comes to doing a boat. How you clean down the metal or the surface before you start painting has a massive impact on the finish. Now if you've got weld marks or dents in the boat, Painting will never ever get that out. However, scratches and loose paint is the worst thing. 
if you put some new paint onto some old loose flaky paint it will straight away start lifting that out and it will show up straight away so do make sure when you start painting your boat that the surface is as good as you can get it and then your results will be so much better wipe your roller your roller will fill up with paint and the end as you start rolling will squeeze paint towards the end and it will start dripping so when you roll the roller out just scrape the end of the roller off and that will stop a lot of drips and splashes virtually all the drips i had was the result of that and once i'd sort of figured out that wiping the end of the roller is uh, a good way of curing it it just didn't happen again and secondly with rollers your roller will start getting eaten away by the solvents in the paint right from the word go so after a while your roller won't work properly it will go horrible and soft and soggy feeling and then it will start tearing so do change your roller these rollers tend to come in sets of I don't know 10 they're very very cheap and I think that on a 50 foot boat doing the roof one roller will last you I don't know half the roof and then you must change it Don't do too large an area. What you need to do is, like I said, about 18 inches by 18 inches on nice open flat areas. And then on the more intricate sections, maybe one foot square. Because what you'll find is the paint starts going off quite quickly. And on a hot day, this is going to be a problem. Or in a poly tunnel. And what you don't want to do is the, uh, let the paint skin up. Get a skin on it. And... Uh, be unworkable so uh, yeah don't overdo the area you're working and keep it to a small quite a small containable area where you can manage it don't overwork your paint you only get a certain amount of time to roll the paint on and tip it off where the paint is fluid enough to work what will happen is the paint will start going off quite quickly and uh, become unworkable so to muck about with it what will happen is the paint will get like a skin on it and if you try and tip off over over that it will leave a horrible surface and you will have no choice but to go back clean it all back and start again so once you've put your paint on and you've tipped it off don't be tempted to go back and muck about with it just leave it let it dry and go for a second coat The last top tip is run out your tipping off brush. After a while, this will collect some paint. So find a piece of cardboard, just run off the excess, and then go back and start using it. And any sort of excess buildup will be nicely wiped out, and it will allow your tipping off brush to carry on for a bit longer. That said, they only can work properly for a short while now when i was doing the roof i changed brushes about halfway which i thought was quite right some people think they can go to the end of a, a boat and paint it with one brush in one day okay that's fine my personal view was after you've done quite a bit of painting get rid of that brush put another dry brush in and there's no two ways about it a new dry brush works slightly better not massively different but slightly better so yes change your brush and that's uh, about it for the top tips what I will say is I am using normal sort of medium brushes and I found them to be the best to be honest I tried a really really soft brush and what would happen is after a while when the paint collected at the end it pinched the bristles together and it wouldn't lie out flat when it was tipping the paint off so I just threw it away and got another brush out it seemed to cure it and there we are that's one small area done I'll just repeat that in section over the back of the boat and that'll be the first coat on this will go to a second coat because there's going to be quite a reasonable amount of wear and tear particularly around the door so yeah two maybe even three coats on this bit but that's all i've been doing so i'll just move on and carry on all this painting reminds me of the boat painter who had a fearsome reputation for cutting corners and saving money to maximize profits and in order to do this what he would do is he would thin the paint down and uh, and that would make the paint go further and save him money but he would still charge the same amount of money and he would thin the paint more and more and more 
until the paint became so watery it would hardly stay on the boats at all. And then one day, after just finishing painting a boat, uh, the heavens opened and a massive rainstorm came down. And it was that fierce that it actually washed the paint off the boat and started running off the sides of the boat. And in a panic, he ran over to the boat and tried to sort of make the best of the situation and ended up slipping on this watery, painty mess and falling in the canal. Now, he was quite a religious man and he honestly believed that it was God punishing him. And he looked up to the sky and said, God, what must I do? And a voice from the heavens boomed down and said, repaint, repaint and thin no more. I'd just like to apologise for that last joke. That was the 1967 Eurovision most contrived joke of the year winner. Ian Clark asks, do I rub down between coats? Um, no, I haven't been so far. So far I've been happy with the surface. So I've just been literally leaving it and just going back and putting another coat straight on top. But if ever it gets really bad, yes, I will go back and maybe rub down small areas before I put it on, just take any nasty high spots off. But so far, it's been okay. And in the time it's taken me to lark about and tell silly jokes, I've done one side of the doors. P. Holland asks, how much was the polytunnel that I used? Well, it is £50 a day or £300 a week. So, yeah. Basically, you get one day for free if you hire it for a week. And to be honest, a week is what you would need to paint anything sizable on your boat, roof, sides, whatever. I sprinted it through in two days. It was very, very hard work. I'm having a nice, relaxing day in the sun today, just rolling on a little bit of paint just relaxing into it and I find doing that you know just taking it gently works well and gives you a very nice result look at that all those bubbles are coming out beautifully this is only the first coat as well so by the time I put the second coat on it I'll have a, a really deep luster so well I hope it will anyway Anyway, I'll get on with this. Well, I think that'll about do it for the first coat. Didn't take that long, to be honest. But it hasn't covered it 100% because it was a white colour underneath and I put blue on top. So yeah, there are thin spots on it, but that's perfectly okay. The second coat will cope with that, but need to let that coat dry first. So we'll let that go, maybe for a day or two, let it go off properly, let it go nice and hard, and then we'll go back, touch it all up, put a second coat on, which will make it thicker and uh, round the edges off more and give it a deeper luster and all this sort of thing and it'll look nice but yeah happy enough with that I mean this blue paint covers so much better than the white paint but it's not perfect is it I mean the white colour does break through but that's perfectly normal you know it will do because it's such a contrast but uh, yeah let that go off and by the time I've done the second coat it'll look good it looks pretty good now to be honest and no I don't think I'm going to bother rubbing it down it seems to be settling down nicely well, that's about as much as I know for advising you with paint anyway. And I hope my top tips um, and answering your questions have, have helped you somewhere along the line. Right, just got enough time to answer a couple of questions. So Max Boone Boone has asked, well, it's a comment more than a question, has mentioned something about a chain for removing paint from the railings, from the tubing. Now, I'm not sure exactly what sort of chain she means, but I, I sort of understand the concept of it. And it's something that I'm going to have a look into later on. So thanks for that comment. Uh, George Blankenship has asked, will I be winter cruising? Well, I plan to do a little bit of winter cruising. There won't be long journeys and I'm not going to be out for hours and hours and it will depend on the weather. I will not be cruising if it, the canal is two inches deep in ice or it's hammering down with rain. But I do plan to do some short trips, just local trips uh, over the winter anyway. Uh, Paul Hulse has asked, how do I work and restore a boat at the same time? Well, I'm in the fortunate position where I work four shifts on and I get four shifts off. Yes, I have to work long shifts when I'm on, you understand, but I do get four off and that allows me to shift a reasonable amount of work in any one go. Otherwise, I wouldn't be half as far through the boat rest restoration as I am now. Um, and a frayed nut has asked, why didn't I use a scabbler? 
not really sure what a scabbler is, but I'm, I think it's something like a, a really hefty wire brush that you put in the end of a grinder and it actually takes the paint off rather than just smooths it down. Which is fine if your boat is rusty or you've got deep pitting or you've got massive blobs of paint, stuff like that. I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to just smooth down the paint that I had to use as a primer, so it was a question of levelling it down, and that's why I used the sander. If I wanted to remove the paint totally, yeah, I would have used something like that. And I think that's about it for the time being. Well, I'm going to sign off this episode, and uh, we'll move on to other things, weather depending, probably working back inside the boat for a little while now. It's a beautiful day today actually, but it's not been. It's been stormy and rainy and very, very windy. So weather permitting, we'll carry on working on the boat, more than likely back inside. But in the meantime, take care and I'll see you soon.